Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. We thank you, Father, for another day. We thank you, Father. We ask now that you prepare your home, your car, your job, whatever you might be in. Make it your sanctuary this morning, bringing God's word. We ask now that you open your heart and your mind to God. That you give God all the glory, honor, and the praise this morning. We ask that you pull the spirit into your home. You pull the spirit into your car. You pull the spirit into your job. You on your front porch, we ask that you pull the spirit onto your front porch with you. We want to be in God's world. We want to walk in God's world. We want to meditate in God's word. And we want God's word to sustain us this morning. We come to you this morning, Father God. Glorify and give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. First and foremost, Father God. Your word is what sustains us, Lord. Your word is what gets us up in the morning, Lord. Your word is what gets us on our way, Lord. Your word is what gets us to this sanctuary, out to our job, or wherever we might be, Father God. Your word is what keeps the spirits in our heart and in our mind, Father God. We glorify your mighty name this morning, Lord. We give you all the glory and the praise. We come to you this morning, Father God. Lift up anyone that's dealing with any kind of Mental or physical challenges in anybody, they covered in your holy healing blood this morning, Father God. We call on the spirit of you. You are our Alpha and Omega, Father God. You are our beginning and the end, Father. You give us all glory. You open up our hearts and minds this morning. We come to you this morning, Father God. This is the thing is dealing with lack of, Father God, in their lives. We lack of revenue, lack of job, lack of food, lack of clothing, lack of health. In this time of COVID, Father God, we know we keep our eyes and our minds and our hearts focused on you, Father God. We glorify your spirit this morning, God. Now we say hallelujah to your name this morning, God. We give you the glory, honor, and the praise this morning, Father. We glorify your word. We stand on the rock of your word today, Lord, as we continue to praise your mighty name, Lord. We stand on the rock of your word this morning, Father God, as we continue to call your spirit into you, Father God. No matter where you are, Father God, we just want your spirit to be with us, Lord. Your grace sustains us, Lord. Father God, we just give you the glory, honor, and the praise this morning. We praise, we, we, your praise sustain us, Lord. We just say hallelujah to your name. Through the discouragement, Father God, we will still call your name. Through the bad times, Father God, we will still call your name. Through the good times, Father God, we will still call on the name of the Lord. Father God, we call on the name of the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised to open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word today, Lord. No matter what that word might be, that word might sting and tell us, Father God, but we know the sting is because you love us, Father God. The sting is because you want us to do what we're supposed to do in your vision, in your word, and we step out in faith of you, Lord, Father God. Your word sometimes, Father God, may give us some tears, Father God, but your, those tears are meant to grow us, Lord, to grow us in your name. Those tears are meant to sustain us and make us know that you are there with us. You walk beside us and you hold us up every single day. Your, your, your word sometimes, like, Father God, may give us some laughter, Father God, but that laughter is also there to teach us a lesson. There's always lessons in your word. To know that we grow in your word. To, that we know your word will sustain us and keep us going every day, Lord. As we step out of our houses, no matter where we're going. As we step out of our beds this morning, Father God, we knew your word was there yet with us. As we step out of our houses this morning, Father God, we knew your word was there yet with us, Father God. So glorify your name, Lord. We give you the glory, honor, and the praise. We give you the glory. Just pull the spirit of God into your home, into your car, into your child. No matter where you might be, if you can find the course way, pull the spirit of the Lord into your heart this morning. And let God know that we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We that you love us so much, no matter what we do, how much we mess up and we get back on track. You are still there, yeah, with us. No matter you love us so much, no matter how much we step around your word instead of stepping into your word, you are still yet with us, Father God. You said, come on back. It's my word right here. Step back into my word. Stay in my word. Did you love us so much, Father God? Did you give us the words, Father God? Did you give us the scriptures? Did you know that that would pertain to our lives, Father God? So we just have to step into the faith. We just have to walk in the faith. We just have to be in the faith and know that you are with us, Father God. We glorify your mighty name this morning, Father God. Hallelujah to your name. We are thankful for everything, Father God. We are thankful for your grace. We are thankful for your spirit. We are thankful for the vision. And we are thankful for the faith in you, Father God. Glory to your name this morning, Father God. We give you the glory, honor, and the praise. We come to you, Father God, ask that you heal anyone that's sick, Father God. We heal the land, Father God. You cover it with your Holy Spirit and your blood, Father God. We glory you the glory, honor, and the praise for the healing, Lord. No matter what's going on around 
our love with the cold. We know that you have the final say. Your will will be done. Your healing will be done. Your word will be done as we walk in faith with you, Father God. We glorify your mighty name this morning, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise for another day. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, Father. We give you the glory and the praise for another day. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for this sanctuary. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for Progressive Community Church family. Thank you, Father God, for Progressive Community Church. And thank you for everything you do for us every day, Father. You have a reason that we can step out. You have a reason that we can open our hearts and our minds, Father God. It's you. It's you. And without you, Father God, where would we be? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name.
with, with contradictions uh, uh, that we don't ask for. God interrupts Abraham's life and, and Abraham helps us to see that, that you have to, from last week, you have to make a commitment to the call that God has on your life. From last week, we understood that you got to make a commitment to the call that, that when God calls you, that you got an answer. Amen? You must answer God when he calls. We said on last week that Abraham didn't allow his status, he didn't allow his son, and he didn't allow his stuff to stop him from hearing from the Savior. Hallelujah. You got to, hallelujah, have a commitment to the call that God has on your life. But then we continued in the text on last week and we discovered that the next thing that the text helps us to see is that, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, contradictions often cause contemporaneous crises. Yeah, this word, hallelujah, hallelujah, test or testing has the idea of testing, approving the quality of someone or something, and it often happens, hallelujah, the test often happens through adversity or through hardship. We said on last week that, that it is the testing, hallelujah, of someone by uh, using adversity. Abraham was being tested by God through an adversity, and adversity is a difficult or an unpleasant situation. And so last week the text declared to us in verse 2 that God was testing Abraham by placing him in a difficult or a unpleasant situation. God is providing the test, hallelujah, in this season that, that he might get you to a place where you don't waver in your faith in spite of the difficult situation you might find yourself in. And in this season of faith, don't be surprised if your faith is tested. Said on last week, don't be surprised if you find yourself in a situation that looks too big for you. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a place that is too big for you to handle on your own. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a fight uh, that looks like you can't win. God is simply testing your faith. And finally, on last week, we saw that in spite of the contradiction, Abraham has con continuous confidence in God and does what God tells him to do and goes where God tells him to go. In spite of what the situation looked like, Abraham had continuous confidence in his creator. And we learned on last week, hallelujah, that storms in life are sure to come, but, but storms come that they might help us build our faith. Storms make your faith, hallelujah, rise and not take away from your faith. Here it is, the situation may have changed, we said on last week, but God is still the same, hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and forevermore, the environment may have, hallelujah, been different, but the eternal is still the same. The atmosphere may have shifted, but, but the Almighty is still the same. And Abraham has confidence, and, and you and I can have confidence in the fact that you serve a God that never changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the same, hallelujah, all the time. We serve a God that ain't swayed by our storms. Glory to your name, God. We serve a God that ain't swayed by our negative moments in life. We serve a God that ain't swayed by what we are going through. But he's still, somebody say he's still the same. Yeah, he's still the same. In our text today, we will continue to look at how to operate in spite of contradictions. Contradictions, hallelujah. Uh, it, it, in the text, it, it, it means that God has promised one thing. Hallelujah. He promised him that he would have a, a son. And now the son of promise is here. But the contradiction in the text, 
Hallelujah is now that the son is here and God spoke to Abraham and said through the seed of this son Isaac you will be a great nation hallelujah but how can he be a great nation if God is calling me to sacrifice my son hallelujah that's a contradiction hallelujah there's a contradiction in the text and hallelujah it means hallelujah it goes against what he shared with with, with abraham and, and 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 abraham helps us to understand how to operate in life when life brings contradictions hallelujah in our text today we see that abraham didn't look hallelujah at this as a contradiction but he looked at it Hallelujah, Sister Paula has a call. Hallelujah. He looked at it first as a call to worship. It's right there in the text. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first thing I noticed in the text in verse 5 is that Abraham saw this not as a contradiction, but he saw it as a call to worship. It's right there in verse 5. It says, And Abraham said to the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Hallelujah. It's right there in the text. Abraham didn't see it as a contradiction. He saw it as a call to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And any time that God calls you, hallelujah, to bring a sacrifice to the altar, it is a call to worship. Hallelujah. And, 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 uh, and the simple question for you today is when was the last time that you brought a sacrifice unto the Lord? I know it's going to get quiet. Hallelujah. Abraham understood that God's call was a call to worship. Abraham understood that any time you make a sacrifice on the altar, that that is worship. And that when you worship, it means that you got to prostrate yourself, hallelujah, or you got to bow down yourself, hallelujah, to the one that you worship. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. And the question today Day is when was the last time, hallelujah, that your struggle knocked you to your knees? Hallelujah. When was the last time, hallelujah, that your contradiction took you to the cross? Hallelujah. When was the last time that your contradiction took you to your Christ? And when you got to your Christ, you bowed down on your knees. Because if you were to worship the Lord, you got to bow down. Hallelujah. You got to bow down on your knees. You got to prostrate yourself. You got to stretch yourself out the for God because you're saying to God, God, I'm giving you all of me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Not, not, hallelujah. When was the last time that something that was a contradiction, hallelujah, caused you to look at your situation differently? Because that's what it brings, hallelujah, when he had contradiction, it allowed him to see differently, hallelujah. And when God brings, hallelujah, moments and allow moments to happen in your life that you don't understand, God is simply trying to get you to see some things differently, hallelujah. Not as a moment of crisis, hallelujah, but it helped Abraham, hallelujah, to see Jesus Christ. Not as a moment of calamity, but it should help you see a moment of full discovery of your Christianity. And not as an emergency, but as an opportunity to emerge and to expand into someone on a whole other level. God is trying, hallelujah, to enlarge your territory in this season. God is trying to expand the capacity. Hallelujah. You thought, glory to your name, God, that, that, that you have been filled uh, to capacity. But God is trying to help you to understand uh, that there is still room uh, for more of me uh, in you. Glory to your name, God. Uh, hallelujah. In other words, uh, that, hallelujah, you're elastic. 
Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. God said, I'm trying to stretch you. Hallelujah. You thought you were going to snap. Hallelujah. But God said, you ain't going to lose it. You thought you were going to make it. You thought you were going to break. God said, you ain't going to break. You thought like a hallelujah balloon, you might bust. But God said, you ain't going to bust. I'm going to fill you up with more of me. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but God wants to fill you up with more of him. Hallelujah. God wants to empower you. Glory to your name, God. Which his spirit is not a predicament to be solved, but a prescription to be delivered. If COVID-19 ain't taught us nothing else, it should have taught us how to see things differently. Glory to your name, God. Not to look through the eyes, hallelujah, of fear, but to look at life and where we are in life through the eyes of faith. Not faith in a vaccine, but faith in a God that works behind the scenes. That you got a God on your side. And even though you might not be able to see his hand at work, that don't mean that God ain't working. Hallelujah. On your behalf, you just can't see it. But God is working in this season. Hallelujah to your name, God, that you might see things differently. Hallelujah. Not faith in a president, but faith in the one that has the government on his shoulders. But the Bible says, hallelujah, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. President got to go in four or eight years, hallelujah. But of his kingdom, uh, there'll be no end. Uh, I know of some folk that have served 40 and 50 years, uh, but their kingdom ain't everlasting. Uh, but we serve a God uh, who, hallelujah, has a kingdom uh, that will never end. Glory to your name, God. Not faith in a system, because every system that we know of has been impacted by COVID-19. The religious system been impacted. Hallelujah, which means that they limited the number of people that could gather together in church. Hallelujah, the educational system been impacted. Kids don't have to go to school. They're learning in a virtual environment. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. The political system been impacted. Everything has been impacted by God. Glory to your name, God. Because God is trying to help us to understand that we are not put faith in man's system, but we ought to keep our faith in God. Glory to your name, God. God allowed COVID-19 because he had, hallelujah, we had become a people that place more, hallelujah, faith in things than we place in God. And the question that God is trying to ascertain in the text is this, do you love what I blessed you with more than you love me? Yeah. It's this question that, that is at the heart of the text that is before us and is the same question that God uses to test his people today. Do you love me more than your child? Do you love me more than the business I gave you? Do you love me more than your spouse? Do you love me more than your career? Do you love me more than your education? Do you love me more than your whip? Do you love me more than your crib? Do you love me more than the thing that I have blessed you with? Hallelujah. Now it might seem strange. Hallelujah to your name, God. That God would go to such an extreme to determine our faith and our commitment level to him. But this is, hallelujah, about the heart of faith. Hallelujah. And this is what God says faith looks like. Do you have enough faith? Hallelujah. When God calls you to worship, to see 
that is not crisis, but it's a call to worship. God is trying to help us to see some things differently. But then the text, hallelujah, helps us to not only understand that it's a call to worship, but the text trying to help us to understand that it's a call to unity. It's right there in verse 6. The text teaches us in verse 6 that when you come to worship God, that you must bring certain elements to God in worship. Hallelujah. It's a call to unity. Here it is in, in verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, both of them, together. Somebody say, together. Abraham brought the wood of the burnt offering, and he laid it on Isaac, his son. I ain't got time to deal with this today, but God is looking for all of you. Hallelujah. It, it was a burnt offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Meaning that nothing remained after the sacrifice was burnt. It was a burnt offering. Not a piece of it remained after it was burnt up on the wood. It was a whole burnt offering unto the Lord. What are you trying to say? Hallelujah. It means that God wants all of you. Hallelujah. I know you got a piece of you over here and, and some of you got a piece of you over there and you got a piece of you in this house and a piece of you at that house and a piece of you on this street and a piece of you on that street. But God is saying today that I I don't want just pieces of you. I want all. I want all of you. Hallelujah. I want all of you. I want all of you. Hallelujah. And we should be able to say like the psalmist, I give you all of me. Is that your mantra today? Can you open up your mouth today and declare to the God of your salvation, God, I give you all of me. He wanted a burnt offering. Hallelujah. He wanted all of Abraham. Hallelujah. Not some of me, but, but Lord, today I give you all of me. And if you give God all of you, this is a unity and oneness with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but what, God, what good is it to be in oneness with God, but you hate your brother and your sister that you see every day? Glory to your name, God. Can't say amen, say ouch. Hallelujah. What, what good is it to be in unity and oneness with God? Hallelujah. You can speak in all kinds of different languages, but you won't talk to the one that's next to you. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. To your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God wants us to be one with him. But the text also shows us that, that there ought to be unity in the family. Glory to your name, God. The text says, and the two of them, father and son, went together. Hallelujah. Although Isaac didn't quite understand or he even know what was about to take place. Hallelujah. He trusted in his daddy. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. I ain't got time to deal with that. But somebody, you got to put your trust in your daddy. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about your earthly daddy. Because I know you got some issues with your earthly daddy. But I'm talking about your heavenly daddy. You might not have no trust issues with your heavenly daddy. He ain't did nothing wrong. Hallelujah. He just been trying to love on you. Hallelujah. In the way that he know you need to be loved on. How does he know how you need to be loved on? Because Jeremiah put it like this. Before I formed you in the womb. Before I placed you in the belly. I knew you. Hallelujah. 
and so he knows how to love you. The problem is you don't know how to be loved by your daddy. But daddy is saying today that I want all of you uh, that I might show you uh, how to love me uh, and how to be loved by me uh, and then how to love yourself uh, and how to love others. Glory to your name, God. Yeah. They went together with one mind. They walked together in unity. Hallelujah. They, 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 they were united in oneness. Father and son were on the same team with the same goal in mind. We, when we come together in the worship, we ought to be a family that worships God together. Not, not one person over here doing what they want to do and somebody else over there doing what they want to do. Hallelujah. They, we ought to be worshiping God together as a family, as a body of believers. And it is so powerful when the family of God worships God together. I know it's so powerful. Hallelujah. That happens when the family of God gets together in worship. If you don't believe me, I ain't got time to go in. Hallelujah. There today. But when you get home, go to Acts chapter 2 and you'll discover that something powerful happens when family comes together and worships God. Hallelujah. Abraham and Isaac showed what it looks like for a family to worship God together. And the question today is when was the last time that your family, hallelujah, worship God together? Yeah, I know the old saying says a family that prays together stays together but I want to add my two cent hallelujah into the mix today and say that a family that worships together wins together hallelujah and is there anybody here that want to win hallelujah in life anybody here that want to see your family win hallelujah together but not only does a family that worships together win together a family that worships together works together hallelujah that means you're building, uh, going in the same direction. Uh, that means you're building something. Uh, hallelujah, that will last. Hallelujah, when things break down. Uh, you're building something uh, that will last uh, the test of time. Because uh, a family that worships together wins together. And a family that worships together works together. And a family that works together worships together together, also walks together. Hallelujah. But our reality, even in life, is that you can have the same mama and not be on the same team. My God. They say amen, say out. Hallelujah. You can have the same uniform and be on different teams because you've got different agendas. And that is where we are and what we're seeing in the Christian world. We, 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 we claim to have the same Christian banner, but we fight in different battles because we've allowed ourselves to get aligned with a political party. Hallelujah. With an R or a D or an L or an I. With the, with the conservative or progressive, with the libertarian or independent, we will allow ourselves to move away from the Christian banner that we might get along with somebody here on earth and God had to sin and allow COVID-19 to invade our spaces that we might see differently and that we might come back together as one body in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have the same banner, but we battle each other. And it gets bad with black folk. Hallelujah. As Dr. Jeremiah Wright says, you can, hallelujah, have people 
that are your color but ain't your kind. Glory to your name, God. But thanks be, hallelujah, God, for a family that shows us in the midst of crisis how to walk together in unity. Hallelujah. We got a call to worship. We got a call to unity. But then, Sister Lisa, I hear the call for the question. Hallelujah. I, I didn't understand it growing up. Hallelujah. We would have church meetings. And in our church meetings, hallelujah, hallelujah, they would say, hallelujah, as they were going through, hallelujah, trying to pass a resolution. They would say, here's the call for the question. And then, hallelujah, as a young kid, I heard everybody say question. And so I began to say question, not understanding in church what it meant. But, but, but today, hallelujah, little Isaac helped me to understand what it means uh, to call for the question. The next thing that the text helps me to understand, hallelujah, that, that this ain't the first time that they worship as a family together. It's right there in the text. Uh, Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Daddy, hallelujah, and my daddy answered, Here am I, my son. And, and he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He called for the question. Hallelujah. It's a good thing when families worship God together. And the reason that I know that, that they worship, hallelujah, together before is because the son knew what to bring to worship. Glory to your name, God. The son realized uh, that there was something missing uh, from worship. The son noticed uh, he wasn't a grown boy. He was still a son. He wasn't, a, hallelujah, over 20 years old. Uh, he was probably less than 10 years old. Uh, but he understood uh, that there was something missing uh, in worship. Some of you, hallelujah, come into the house of God uh, and can't understand. Stand. Uh, you're 30 and 40 and 40 and 70 and 70 and 90 uh, and still don't understand uh, when something is missing uh, from worship. But the son, this boy, noticed uh, that without the missing element, uh, worship would be incomplete. Uh, hallelujah. The son gave voice uh, to the elements of worship, uh, which helps me to understand uh, that children will listen in service if you take the games away. Children will listen in service if you let them. He asked his daddy, Daddy, where is the sacrifice? He, he's simply saying, Daddy, hallelujah, we can't worship if we ain't got an offering. Daddy, we can't truly worship if we ain't got the lamb. Daddy, I hear what you're saying about worship, but we ain't worship like this before. Daddy, I heard you tell them that we're going to go up to this place to worship God, but we don't have all of the elements of a worship. Daddy, we ain't got a sacrifice. We we don't have everything uh, to give to God uh, just because uh, he is God. He said, Daddy, we ain't got to give. Uh, check out the question, hallelujah, of the son. Daddy, where is the lamb? In other words, the young boy puts his daddy on the spot with a simple question. Won't kids do that to you? Hallelujah, your kids will put you on the spot. Hallelujah, my eight-year-old, nine-year-old now, hallelujah, puts me on the spot with questions that I believe are too advanced for his thinking. I say to myself, boy, you, that's an intelligent question that you shouldn't be asking at this age. I don't know, maybe it's just me, hallelujah. Maybe I just got a son, hallelujah, who asked me questions and I have to scratch my head trying to think of the right answer to put it in the right 
place. Uh, that's where Abraham was. Uh, he's uh, looking because he has a question that's so deep uh, that he's trying to figure it out uh, how to answer. Hallelujah. This would have been a good time, Deacon Case, uh, for, hallelujah, Abraham to try to manipulate the situation and send his servants back to the house uh, for the lamb. Uh, this would have been the exact moment uh, that Abraham tries to rely on his own understanding, uh, hallelujah, of the sacrificial system. Uh, because sometimes uh, when we don't have the answer, uh, we try to figure things out uh, all on our own. Uh, sometimes uh, when we don't have the answer, uh, we try to lean uh, on our own understanding. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah, this would have been a great place for Abraham to try to lean on his own understanding. Hallelujah. This question posed a great opportunity for Abraham to try to work it out. All by himself. Because sometimes we try to figure life out all by ourselves. It could have been a great segue for Abraham to, to do something different. It provided the perfect opportunity, hallelujah, for him to try to discover the answer by himself. And, and here is the reality of the situation. Nobody in the world would have been mad at him. Hallelujah for taking the easy way out. This was a moment where he could go all in with God or, or go all in on his own. On and he chose to go all in with God. God will, will, hallelujah, each of us in our walk with God will reach this moment in our relationship with God, the moment of decision when we must move forward with faith I move forward or backwards in fear. This is an opportunity to either go all in, hallelujah, with God, or go all in on your own. Opportunity to go all in, hallelujah, when you're at the table, hallelujah, and you push all your chips in, hallelujah, or you walk away. This is one of the biggest moments of his life brought about by a simple but profound question from a child. Yeah. What have you taught your children about worship? Hallelujah. What, what have you taught your children about giving? What, what have you taught your children about sacrificing to God? What have you taught your children about worshiping God? In this COVID-19 environment, what have you taught your children about their trust in God? What have you taught your children about God? Have you taught your children how to worship God? That, that, that worship Hallelujah is about giving to God. That worship is about more than the building. That worship is about your sacrifice, sacrificing the best to God. That worship is about giving up what I believe is valuable without any promise that I will receive anything back in return. Yeah, worship is about releasing the very thing that I hold dear in my life. What have you taught your children about worship and who to worship in this season? Hallelujah. First, I see a call. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, to worship. Hallelujah is right there in the text. And then I see a call. Hallelujah. To not only worship, but a call to unity. Hallelujah. And to become one with God. Next, I see that there is a call for the question. Daddy, where is the lamb? But then finally, the text helps me to understand in verse 8. Hallelujah. That Abraham, when he didn't have the answer, he made a call to the Lord. It's right there in the text. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. 
Abraham made a call to the Lord. Hallelujah. Notice that Abraham knew what to do. Hallelujah. He knew what to sacrifice, but he didn't try to bring a substitute on his own. He stayed faithful to the purpose that God had called him to. And, and somebody today, don't try to do, hallelujah, what you want to do. You must do what God has called you to do. When God told him, hallelujah, that he would have a child. Here it is, Abraham and Sarah tried to work and help God out. But this time, Abraham says, I ain't getting in the way of God. I ain't going to try to help God out. Abraham says, hallelujah, God will provide. And that's good news in this season of COVID-19 to know that God will provide. Is there anybody here that knows that I don't care where you find yourself in life that God will provide. Here it is. Hallelujah. You can call on the Lord. Hallelujah. Here it is. The word provide in its original language. Glory to your name, God. It means to see to. Hallelujah. To see to. The word provides in its original language. It simply means to see to. And what Abraham shares with Isaac is that God is going to see to it that we have everything that we need right when we need it. I know it ain't here right now, but hallelujah, but we are here right now. But when it's supposed to be here, God is going to see to it uh, that it is here uh, right when we need it. Uh, in other words, uh, God has promised, uh, and I believe in his word. Uh, that's what Abraham is saying. Uh, God has promised, uh, and I believe uh, in the promises of God. Uh, in other words, uh, hallelujah. God promised us that God will perform just what he promised us. Hallelujah. But in this instance, God never told Abraham that he would provide a lamb for Abraham. And so that helps me to understand that even if God never says it, he understood that God will provide even when God doesn't tell you what's going to happen on the other side. Is there anybody here that got faith enough in God that can say, I'm going to keep on walking with God because I know God will provide. God will see to it that when I need it, it'll be fair. Anybody here that will call up the Lord? Anybody here that will put your faith in God? You didn't know how it was going to work out. You simply trust in God. It's the word of God. And God showed up. Hallelujah. God made a way. Hallelujah. God came through. Hallelujah. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here 
never been in a situation like Abraham. Hallelujah. And you have to step out and go faith. Step out, not knowing what God was going to do. Simply put one foot in front of the other because you believe in the word of God that's what God is looking for in this season he's looking for somebody that ain't afraid to get up out of the boat I wish I had a Oh, oh. 
In other words, you you come backwards in your relationship with God. You got to that moment that Abraham got to, and instead of walking by faith, you you started walking in fear. You did like Peter, you took your eyes off, off of the word and you began to seek. But but the one thing I love about God, hallelujah, is when I'm sinking, he reaches down his hand and he catches me. Pulls me back up and said, Why did you doubt? Hallelujah. You don't have to doubt the Lord. You can walk with Him. You ain't got to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Because some people, it's the shame of coming back home. You ain't got to be ashamed of coming back to God. Once you come and give your life back to God. And then maybe somebody else who, you know, the Lord is your personal Lord and Savior. You worship Him that way, but you don't have a, a place where you worship Him. You heard the words today and the Spirit touched your heart and told you that this is the place, Progressive Community Church, is the place where you should worship. And if that's you today, won't you come and give your, give your, hallelujah, yourself to this place, to this, this local body, this local assembly. That's you today. Now we know that there are folks that are watching us by way of social media. We don't want to leave you out, hallelujah. Somebody's going to see this, hallelujah, and be saved. So we thank God for salvation right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God, hallelujah, for every person that, that confesses with their mouth and believes in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, from the grave. Hallelujah, with all power in his hands. The word simply say, you just got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So simply say, Lord, I know that I am a sinner. Please come into my life and save me the best I know how. I'm giving my life to you. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's all you got to do is say that prayer. You say that prayer. And you believe it in your heart, my sister, my brother, you are saved. Hallelujah. Church, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The loved one that was lost but is now found. And we thank God. We rejoice right now. The angels in heaven, Father, we thank you. But this your servant, this your child, has found their way back home. We pray, oh God, that you would endow them with your life. Endow them with your power, endow them with your Holy Spirit, oh God, that they may walk in unity, they may walk in oneness with you. And then, God, not only that they walk in unity and oneness with you, but Lord, that they walk, that we walk in unity and oneness as a body of believers in this local assembly, God. And we continue to walk in unity and oneness with each other. And we thank you what you have done in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord some praise. Now is the time when you can join us in as we continue to worship God through the sowing of seeds. We sow seeds here in Progressive. I dare you to name your seed. We sow both spiritual and physical seeds. My spiritual seed is the seed of faith spiritual seed is the seed of faith by day to name your seed. Get your seed in your hand and lift it high. And then repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it. But God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word. In an expectation of a harvest. 100% obedience to God. 100% obedience to tithing. 100% faith. Amen. Amen. All across the sanctuary and even those watching by way of social media, you can join us in sowing your seed, going to the cash app. And on the cash app, the dollar sign, PCC Gary. Go to the cash app, it's the dollar sign, PCC Gary. And sow your seed.
That's how you worship. That's your sacrifice. Hallelujah. God wants all of you. Because here it is. If he got all of you, hallelujah, that you will sow a seed without even thinking about it. Hallelujah. Because he has all of you. In this season, that's what God is seeking. He is seeking all of you. Yes, Lord. Those watching by way of social media, if you want to send in your, your offering, you can send it to 201 East Fifth Avenue, Suite A, Gary, Indiana, 46402. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't forget, don't forget, there are still some greens available. Hallelujah. There are a limited number of greens available, Sister Frida. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Amen. If you want some greens for Thanksgiving, hallelujah. There are no cost to you. They're here at the farm. You can come and, and get some greens tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock. While supplies last. Amen. Amen. While supplies last. They're here at the church in the Hoot House. They have not been harvested yet. They're still on the mind. Amen. So won't you come? Won't you come tomorrow? And then join us every morning at 6 a.m. as we go before the Lord and pray every morning at 6 a.m. Has anyone had an opportunity to sow their seed? Join us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Minister Dawson. Join us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Hallelujah. Since we're still in the month of Thanksgiving, we give thanks and praise unto God in our prayer. So join us tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I'm going to call, thank you, Holy Spirit, our leaders. If you're a leader of Progressive Community Church or you have aspirations to be a leader, I need you to join me this week on the prayer line. Amen. 6 a.m. All leaders, join us 6 a.m. On the prayer line. Amen. Amen. If you need the information, it's in your bulletin. Or hallelujah, just text me and I'll give you uh, the information to the prayer line at 6 a.m. But I need all leaders this week to join us on the prayer line. This week, God is getting ready to do something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He ain't told me what. He just said, get on the line, leaders. That means God is getting ready to do something. We have to operate by faith. Amen? Amen. 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 Most gracious God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you, oh God, for these gifts, oh God. We thank you for these seeds that have been sown. God, we pray now that you would sow back into the bosom of everyone that's sown some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Because we know that all of our gifts, God, they come from you. Every seed that we have, it comes from you. But then, God, you're an unlimited God, and we won't place any limits on you. We say, however you want to bless your people, to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. amen. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody this week. Amen. To wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. It's this Thursday, amen. I want you all to be safe, amen. Amen. As COVID is rising everywhere, hallelujah. Wear your mask and be your social distance and where you are, but have an awesome time in the Lord, amen. Amen. As you celebrate, hallelujah, Thanksgiving uh, this week, amen. If our hearts and minds are one accord, let us stand. I want to again say thank you on behalf of my family and I. Again, we thank you for uh, honoring us as your pastors. Amen. Amen. We thank you for the gifts that you gave to us. Amen. Every small, every large gift, we don't take anything lightly. Amen. Because people don't got to be, ain't got to be kind to you. Amen. Amen. People ain't got to be kind, ain't got to be nice. And when they are, you ought to say thank you. And so we say thank you today. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Last time I was here, I was driving a pickup truck, and the gas tank was leaking. And I had no idea.
was ill, but it was two members from the church, and they took me in as though I was their mother. I believe it's these two women. Amen. Uh, I didn't touch them. They took me, helped me get gas, helped me find my way back home because I was turning around. Amen. And I just want to say thank you. Amen, 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 amen. That's what the spirit of church is all about. Amen. It's about us seeing our sister and our brother. And we've got the way our neighbor, that's what Jesus said. Which one of these was a fever? It's a hell that was down. It's about seeing our neighbor in need. Hallelujah. And lifting. Hallelujah. I am. Be what Jesus has been to you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. 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 Most gracious God, we thank you for this day. Thank you. We thank you, oh God, that you're building up radical faith in us, God. We thank you, Father, that you, you're showing us that, hallelujah, that you will provide, God, but all we have to do is call on your name. That it's time for us to make that call, God. It's time for us to make that call to worship. That it's time for us to make that call to unity. That it's time for us to just call on your name. So help us today, oh God, to live out our faith. Not just to say we have faith, oh God. Hallelujah. But to live out our faith in ways that the world will know. You are real. And so, God, we pray this week that you bless your children, oh God, as they call on your name. Because, God, you will provide it. It simply means, oh God, to see to it. You'll see to it, oh God. That we have what we need right when we need it, oh God. So we thank you for it. God, now as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we pray that you would keep us in perfect peace our minds stated on you. Bless every household, oh God, that's here and to listening by way of social media, oh God. We pray, oh God, your anointing to fill their house. We pray for your power, your strength, your peace, and your joy to permeate, hallelujah, their being and where they are. And grant them, oh God, your presence. That's our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for sharing with us this morning.